hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new here hi my name is wangari mwangi thank you for coming to my tiny minuscule corner of the internet you've read the title of this video today i'm talking about what factors you should at least be thinking about when you're trying to decide which college to attend i was privileged enough to have um choices to have to get into multiple universities you know bitch said options okay she said choices okay and so i had to make a pretty big decision out of which university to attend and when I obviously I went to the internet, I went to search to find resources that would help me know which factors I should be thinking about. And something that came up a lot that used to irritate me and still does is when people are like, when you step on campus, you will just know. OK, so apparently when you step on a campus, there are vibes that are in the air that you just feel. And somehow it tells you that this is the university for you. And so why it makes me irritated is because first, okay, international student, hi, I live in Kenya. No one has thousands of dollars, okay, in their bank accounts to buy tickets to go to the U.S. and step on a campus to feel its vibes. I had to make a decision from my house. Second of all, okay, there's a pandemic, there's a panoramic, okay, there's a pedestrian. No one is flying anywhere, okay, sadly, okay, so... Everyone has to make a decision from the comfort of their home. And this perspective I'm giving is obviously from an international student, an African student. These are the factors that were going through my mind that I made spreadsheets and actually like got, did research and got advice on. And I want to give a disclaimer. I'm not making a decision for anyone. Please don't ask me to choose for you. I will not choose for you. You can ask me for advice and tips and what I think. I will absolutely give that. Mm -hmm absolutely give that but i will not make a decision for you and anything i say in this video is advice and is my perspective so just take it as a rough outline as a skeleton where you can like flesh it out for yourself and make the decision for yourself it's very personal no one can make it for you thank you very much let's get into the video so first things first is financial aid honestly i don't think it's worth going to a university where you have to take number one debt or you have to put a financial burden on your family if you can avoid putting financial burden on your family. I mean, for me, that was really important. And I could not go to any school that did not give me 100% financial aid. So you need to look at what different universities are giving you, what they're offering you, can you appeal? And if you have to take loans, take that very seriously. Look at the rate of interest while you're in school. Look at the rate of interest after you graduate. Look at your return on investment. It's called ROI's return on investment. Yeah. However much you invest in your college tuition, let's say you're putting in 20,000 per year after you graduate, will you get a return on that investment in 5, 10, 20 years? My advice is just pick the university that gives you the most financial aid, to be honest. Number two is reputation, stroke social ranking, stroke name, stroke clout. Okay. We all know where I'm going with this. A lot of people know it as HYP, for example, like Harvard, Yale, Princeton. That's like the order of how people talk about these universities. But if you actually look at the ranking in real life, Princeton is usually ranked first. So it's usually P, I think it's PHY or PYH. I don't know. I don't care. And I remember when I was trying to pick between Columbia and Harvard, my dad asked me this. He was like, if you walk out on the street, do you think anyone knows what a Columbia is? You know, and even the first time I told my mom about Columbia, I remember her asking me, you mean the country? And so all Obviously, Harvard has the most clout, has the most name recognition, has the like highest reputation, the best known university or whatever. This video somehow became me campaigning for Harvard. I don't know how, but you get what I'm saying. I don't have a specific field or specific thing I want to do with my life that's tied to a university. And so I chose a university that would give me the most options, the most clout, the most name recognition, such that regardless of whatever I do, even if I major in like... Slovakian languages and classical literature, it doesn't matter as long as it says Harvard University. The clout of the school and the name reputation gives me everything I'll need to open doors in the future, at least to get my foot in. This is my advice for a lot of people who don't have anything specifically they're in love with. Just pick the university that gives you the most options in the future, the most like clout, the most reputation the best reputation you get what i'm trying to say yeah <laughs> number three is actual ranking so this is what i was saying before where princeton actually ranks before harvard so princeton is first harvard is second yale is third and 
I remember this when it was going through my mind a lot when I was like, okay, so Princeton ranks first in the world. Shouldn't I be going to a university that ranks first in the world? And even when I was thinking about engineering specifically, for example, Columbia ranked higher than Harvard in engineering. So I was like, maybe I should go to Columbia because it ranks higher. And a lot of people talk about like the times, the THE ranking or so the actual world ranking. I felt a bit scared to go to a university that was lower ranked than another university had gotten into and a lot of people have messaged me i remember one person was like northwestern no duke is higher than northwestern in rankings i think but they want to go to northwestern but they're scared because duke ranks higher it kind of you feel like vv you kind of feel scared to reject a higher ranked university and i was like honestly no one really cares about those rankings that much i mean it matters to some extent but it doesn't matter that much that you should base your decision on the university that ranks higher so if you're feeling scared for picking a university that's ranked a bit lower you're not alone and honestly it's not that big of a deal the next point number four is major specific ranking so this is what i was talking about earlier where when i thought i wanted to get into engineering i looked at engineering specific rankings and i think the ranking of a school in its major, in its specific concentration or major, or whatever, is actually more important than its actual general university ranking. Because, for example, at Harvard, I know the, let's say the economics department is ranked first in the world, but maybe the department of English is ranked like 12th in the world, maybe. So you see that kind of like events out. But when you look at a specific major, especially if you're really passionate and really want to go to space, want to go into a specific major i think it's worth looking at the major specific ranking and there are websites that can break it down for you i'll link some in the description box and i'll put some on the screen because i don't have any of the top of my head right now but um if you're really in love with like let's say chemical engineering then and you have options of like what options can i think of let's say cornell versus harvard i and Cornell ranks higher than Harvard, it might be worth it to go to Cornell's engineering program because, and this ties into my fifth point, which is like academic and research opportunities. Usually universities that rank high in a specific major is because they have, number one, the best professors, they have the most research opportunities, they have the best labs, they have the most like academic resources, they have the best libraries, the most manuscripts, they have the most funding. And so it often ties in that, let's say Cornell ranks higher than Harvard in engineering. It's really because Cornell generates more engineering research output. They have more like engineering professors, they have better labs, they have more academic and research opportunities for you. Some examples I wrote down are journalism. You have, let's say you have Northwestern and you have Harvard. I know Northwestern has an actual like journalism school. Harvard doesn't even have a journalism major. Maybe you'd major in like English and work at the Crimson, but it would be more practical to, for example, pick Northwestern. If you're trying to go into business, you maybe you have Babson and you have Swarthmore, maybe pick Babson because Babson has a business school, like it's actually a business school, and Swarthmore is more liberal artsy type of school. And these are just examples. I'm not saying if you have these options, you should pick them. I just think that if you're very specific in the field you want to go to, it's important because also those opportunities you get in your four years will contribute to what you do outside, like once you graduate. So it's helpful if you go to a university that's known for a specific major so that when you get out of that university you can have let's say more doors open for you because like that university is known for this thing like babson is known for producing good business majors so if you're trying to go in business it's better to go to babson you see you see you see yes well, let's say you get into chemical engineering and after you graduate you want to work for chemical engineering firm if you go to a school that is well known for producing chemical engineers it's easier for you to get into that work work of line line of work so that line of work i think we'll, what they call it in like business is target versus non-target schools like for example if you're trying to get a job at goldman sachs and you know sell your soul to the white man in the capitalist society i mean same but if you're trying to work in goldman sachs after graduation it's probably better for you to go to wharton and like you Penn business school that it than it is for you to go to let's say What's a non-target school that's off the top of my head? Rhodes College. Let's say Rhodes, Rhodes College in where it where is Rhodes College, Rhode Island. I don't know. Uh, let's say I'm just giving an example. Please don't come for me. So 
Wharton is a target school and it will be much easier for you to get to Goldman Sachs just by the fact that you go to Wharton because like the recruiters come to campus and whatever and there are probably a lot of alumni who have worked there because of all those connections so think about your work or after graduation opportunities that that school gives you so extracurricular activities and I feel like as an African I didn't think extracurricular activities were that serious but if you're for example a violinist and you want to play for the new york philharmonic maybe you go to a school that has an actual orchestra if you're like a, if you're an ice skater and you want to go to the olympics maybe you go to a school that has the ice rink i'm using purposefully ridiculous examples just so that i can prove to you a point and not actually give examples that are practical so that people don't make decisions based on what i say anyway extracurricular activities really shape what you do at her what you do in college and they are a big part of your social life and your like resume and whatever obviously it always ties into the future if you want to get into a specific field into the future maybe go to a school that has clubs that will help you ease that transition after you graduate so um for example let me think of a practical example if you want to go into journalism let's say you want to go into journalism and you go there are two schools they have a they have a a major in media and communications which is fine but one school has a newspaper that's actually read by people and actually known and one school just like as a like it just has like an online thing they publish once every six months and this other school has like a newspaper that actually comes out every day is printed they have a website they have na -na -na -na. it might be better for you to go to the school with the newspaper because in your resume when you're going to apply for a journalism job in a media house or a publishing house it will show your experience in this specific school not to say that you won't get a job if you don't have an extracurricular in that field i mean i don't know i haven't gotten there yet in life but i i imagine it would be easier and you know you just do everything possible in your power to make your life after graduation as easy as possible in my humble opinion is what i think next is semester organization there are two main systems that i know of there's the semesters where we have two semesters we have the fall semester and the spring semester and we ha and this quarter system and where they have i think fall spring and winter quarter i'm not very sure but i know like stanford and i think northwestern have the quarter system and so the main thing with this organization is usually timelines so let's say the the um semester system will start the semester in um september the quarter system will probably still be on summer break in september because they end their school year a bit later I might be confusing this information and i'll do my research and put it on the screen when i'm editing but think about timelines for traveling if traveling is something you want to do and timelines for i think it affects i i don't know maybe like social life but i've had people talk about the why they don't want to go to the quarter system or why they don't want to go to the semester system anyway if it's important to you that's fine if it's not well and good also the quarter system is a much shorter time it's like 10 weeks packed together so it's like 10 weeks of running 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 and then you get a break and then 10 weeks of running 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 and then you get a break i feel like the semester system is like the first few weeks is like you're walking it's like you're walking and then all of a sudden the last like six weeks you're like running sprinting trying to do everything at the same time no no, no. it's actually walking midterms where you sprint and then you walk again and then you sprint at the end so it might affect your learning style like if you have a specific way you like to learn i guess it's it's up to you i'm just i'm just here to give you the information next is school curriculum there are some schools that have very specific curriculums the ones that off the top of my head are columbia columbia has a core curriculum if you're going into the college at columbia you have to take a lot of humanities literature music um art humanities classes if you're trying to go to the engineering school for foundation they also have an engineering curriculum where you have to take a bunch of maths and physics classes and engineering classes is that something you like well and good if that's something you don't like i didn't go to columbia because i would have to go to the full foundation school and the engineering curriculum i felt like would have stifled me and i think i'm correct because of the classes i'm taking now but just know that about you know that about the school sometimes the curriculum can be a bit restricting as to which classes you can take which can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on the type of person you are and your general goals another school that comes to mind is brown so brown has an open curriculum um 
and so you design your own like plan which is a lot of freedom and depending on the type of person you are again can be a good thing or bad thing if you really enjoy that if you're really a person who likes to have your own space to create things your own space like come up with your plan it would be amazing for me i felt like it was a bit too much freedom where because i was in because i have not decided what i want to do i felt like i would have sampled a lot of things without actually deciding on a main plan until it's maybe too late so i guess look at me acting like i got into brown and i would have had the opportunity to actually go anyway brown is amazing they don't have gpas and personally i think that's the best thing i've ever had since sliced bread okay next thing is community and i really want to stress this because i don't think it's something people consider so first of all just be aware that as an international as an african you're going into a space where you're predominantly the minority i mean i'm african okay i'm a woman okay? and i'm black <laughs> bitch said minority all the way i really wanted a community of african people kenyans if i could get that women and black people that was very important for me and it's one of the major reasons i turned down caltech you know aside from the student loans lol but i just felt like all the way on the west coast in pasadena i would be very isolated as a black person in caltech generally and in that area and with the rising of the black lives matter movement i didn't know how to take that and i didn't know how i would be able to deal with it i knew i wanted to stay in the northeast so anyway if you're a black person maybe you want a black community if you're african if you're asian if you're native american if you're middle eastern if you're arab especially if you're muslim i know wearing the hijab is important to some people so you might want to go to an area where I mean that's allowed i don't think there are areas where it's not allowed specifically but i know there's been a lot of like political discourse ab about that sadly um if you're along the lgbtq community and you want to go to an area that has a community that supports that i know that's like a big deal especially for africans who are like lgbtq in africa and unable to bring out that side of them you want to go to the us and like be your best self that's important to find a community there and i think you should really look into it and political divide um if you're more liberal if you're more conservative whatever side you want to be just be aware of where you're going is what i think i'm trying to say because i really don't want it to be a situation that happens to some people where let's say you go to the south and you face a lot of not a lot but you face a significant amount of racism and as someone who has never thought of themselves as black it can be jarring and you like break down and you have culture shock and you have academic stress and then racism on top of that i think uh, please knowledge is power just be very aware of where you're going and the communities in that area also if you're a woman and you want to go to a women's specific college please more power to you barnard college sexy af wesleyan beautiful Mm, i think it's the university of notre dame or notre dame <laughs> Sijui, i don't know but yeah also if you're a guy and you want to go to a guy specific college i only know more house but like that's that's cool next thing is location and price of the school outside school and the campus so let's start with location location the main factors the main ones that i know and i thought about was east coast west coast south I mean i should have done west coast east coast south yeah so east coast mm, east coast versus west coast the only school i got in on the west coast was caltech and i know stanford is a big one a lot of people go to stanford just be aware that you're across the united states most of the international community is in the east coast like in the northeast specifically so like the northeast has horrible horrible winters so maybe if you're a person who Mm, maybe your asthma is deadly maybe go to where they sun if you're a person who wants to see snow maybe go to the northeast i mean is seeing snow a reason to go to a college i don't know the west coast can be a bit isolating because there are not as many schools as the northeast if you go to the south i've talked about this you know the racial divides and the racial tensions there might not be appealing however they have the best food so i mean i mean i mean they also have really good weather although it's not in texas so i'm i'm confused and then the pros and cons of campuses specifically so there are three main types of campuses there's a city campus in the suburbs 
and in the rural areas so for example city campus is something like nyu or columbia nyu specifically is like in the heart of new york city you know it's um i mean you have new york city as your campus which is amazing in itself but it's super super expensive it's really expensive the price of living in cities whichever city it, it is going to be whether it's um nyc boston atlanta what's another main city in washington dc the life the cost of living in cities is going to be much more expensive than in like the rural areas or whatever so keep that in mind because your social aspects will be oftentimes off campus there's the suburb universities universities that are in the suburbs so for example princeton that's in the leafy suburbs of new jersey one thing with suburbs they can be quite isolating you're in the middle of like a residential area most of the time they're not that many other college campuses around you compared to the city campus that has a lot of campuses around them however it depends on where you go because like i i think harvard is in like a suburb i think because it's like in cambridge massachusetts which boston is a city so i guess cambridge is a suburb but because there are a lot of universities in boston i don't think um harvard is that isolated i mean there's tough there's wellesley there's mit there's um bu there's northeastern there's boston college there are a lot of universities in the boston area so if you're in a suburb around boston i guess that's fine it's not that isolating obviously there'll be much less of a party scene on campus i mean there'll be much less of a party scene off campus compared to like nyu where the social scene is off campus like if i want to go out and i'm in nyu i'll go to a club in new york city versus if i'm in princeton and i want to go out obviously i mean there are clubs in princeton new jersey but you're more likely to go for a party on campus so suburb universities in the suburb have a more active social scene on campus and then rural universities the one that comes to mind is cornell that's in ithaca new york it's somewhere upstate new york the weather is horrible the winters are horrible but it's very it's it's also very isolated like it's quite far and it's quite hard to get there so if you're traveling that might be something you consider however it has the most popping social life on campus because literally everything is on campus i mean if you want to go to a party if you want to go out you're going to something on campus and i think that really helps breed a community of students because you're literally doing everything together all the time which might be good or bad depending on how you want it and life is much cheaper there because you're not spending money on expensive restaurants off campus like you are if you live in a city you're more likely to have like student cards or like student coins or student whatever student money to spend on things on campus you're more likely to get free food because i mean there are so many events so your social life will be more on campus rather than outside in the city next is social life food aesthetic and vanity so these are things that i think are I mean are a little bit shallow to think about but they are uh, important if you're looking for a popping social scene i mean i once told my mom that social scene was something i was considering and she asked me if i'm leaving kenya to party <laughs> so that's on uh, having african parents but okay personally nairobi social scene is nice like the nightlife is good and i'm legal here so i already knew i'm not going to the us to party so this wasn't something i was specifically really considering but like if you want to be free if you've been if you've been held tightly at home if you can't like go out at home and you want to let loose in college you want to party and drink and club and whatever i mean go to a college that has a popping party scene go to a college that has a good party life i mean i hear that mouth they drink a lot maybe because it's cold maybe because they like to party i don't know it's just things i hear if you want to go to a school that has like sororities or whatever um if you want to be a kappa kappa new alpha beta theta tau more power to you go to a school that has a chapter and lastly i want to say go with your gut okay um this might sound counterintuitive to everything i've said because literally i've given you a list of points but i think sometimes you have that voice in your head that's telling you pick this one pick this one you know maybe it's your ancestors telling you maybe it's your guardian angel looking out for you maybe it's just your brain and model free thinking can you tell i'm taking a psychology class okay i think you should pick that school if you have two schools that are really equal on most of the things and you have one school that you just feel you just feel it's a bit better then i think you should go to that school honestly i think one of the worst emotions in life you can feel is regret 
and you really don't want to regret a decision you're going to make and be at for the next four years and also i just want to say that humans are horrible at predicting their future happiness so you always think you'll be happier at one school than the other school but honestly you'll be fine in both schools like it's like you'll be fine your happiness will even out or whatever so if you made it this far congratulations okay i really hope i've helped you at least think through your whatever you're going through right now anyway all the best to you guys trying to decide which college you're going to if you had options i love to see it i truly do as usual feel free to message me if you want more advice or like a one-on-one -on -one conversation my social media on the screen as usual thank you so much for watching please subscribe if you haven't there is a red button calling for you to subscribe and i would really appreciate it thank you so much for all of you who have subscribed so far thank you so much for watching see you in my next video okay thanks bye